Well, the Emperor of All Maladies is a book about the history of cancer, but it's also a book about the future of cancer. And I started writing this book in 2005 when I was a cancer doctor in training in Boston. And the book was really inspired by a single episode. And that was when a woman I was treating for a kind of stomach cancer, and she asked me, where are we going? Um, and her question was a small question about her prognosis. Uh, but in some ways, when I really thought about her question, I realized I couldn't answer her question personally. And not only that, I couldn't point her to a book or a magazine or a website that would answer that question in the most longitudinal, most complex sense, which is, where are we going in the war on cancer? How did we get here? And what happens next? When I started writing this book, I thought about cancer as a disease. But as I wrote more and more about it, it seemed as if it was not just a disease, but something that envelops our life so fully that it was like writing about someone. It was like writing about an alter personality, an illness that had a psyche, a behavior, a pattern of existing. And so it felt as if I was not writing about something, but about someone, and therefore it became a biography, much like you'd write a biography of another person and you'd like to find out their life, their death, their future, their past. So we'll meet two characters in this book who sort of thread the entire book together. The first is Sidney Farber. Farber was a pathologist at Children's Hospital. Uh, he was called the doctor of the dead because he examined children's bodies after they had died and he looked at their tissues and performed autopsies. Um, and he thought he would emerge up into the main uh, part of the hospital to try to see the children that uh, he was trying to diagnose. And in this process, he stumbled upon a vitamin or a vitamin analog, which became one of the first chemotherapeutic drugs. And in the mid-1940s, Farber uh, found himself an incredible collaborator, um, and her name was Mary Lasker. Mary Lasker was a socialite, uh, a legendary entertainer, um, and she became politically involved in launching the war on cancer. And she, she essentially convinced Richard Nixon to, uh, to force the nation to launch an enormous war on cancer. And to some extent, science is still trying to get it right, but we know so much more about cancer today than we knew a thousand years ago or even 10 years ago. If there's one seminal discovery in the history of cancer, it is the fact that cancer is not caused by exogenous events, but in some ways that cancer is caused by the dysregulation of endogenous genes, the genes that are already in every cell in our body. I want readers to realize that this is a long historic battle, an iconic battle, and a battle against something very deep and elemental that will continue for many, many years to come. Human ingenuity and scientific discipline have a long past and a long future, and it's only by engaging every single force that we have with us that will ever cure cancer or find a way to control it.